if your gimbal aren't performing correctly and you're struggling with shaky footage, you're probably wondering if there's something wrong with your gimbal. But trust me, it's not the gimbal that's the problem. I've been there myself, wasting countless hours trying different combinations, buying new gimbals, thinking that maybe this new gimbal will be better. But none of this matters unless you have adjusted the settings correctly. And there are often one very important setting that many tend to overlook, and it's called dead band. Because if you don't have the dead band set correctly, the micro movements when we do with our hands while operating the gimbal will be noticeable and lead to shaky or wobbly footage. So let me explain to you not just how, but also why this setting can make or break your footage. And once you get this adjusted right, it's like blowing new air into a gimbal and it will completely transform your footage. Hey there, my name is Peter. I am the creator of the Gimbal Academy and I will teach you how to get the most out of your gimbal. And if you don't know anything about me, I have a long history of working with gimbals and my channel is packed with amazing gimbal videos and tutorials. So today I'll show you how to adjust the dead band correctly, but I will also show you how to dial in the smoothness of your gimbal. Just be aware that on some gimbals, the dead band can only be adjusted within the app. Today I'll be adjusting all the settings on the DJI S3, but the principle will apply to any gimbal, no matter which one you have. Before we start adjusting any settings on the gimbal, make sure that you got your camera on there with all the accessories and then the gimbal is properly balanced. I won't go over how you do this today because I've already made that video. But what we can do is that we can check how good the balance is on the gimbal. There's a couple ways we can do that. We can go into this to the start menu here and you can see this little green box where the camera is on. This indicates that we have good balance. But if you want to calibrate it, make sure that you've got good balance on all motors go into the menu and you pull down here, you go into the little settings icon there and you scroll down until you find gimbal auto check. You press this one and here you can calibrate it and check that all motors are good. Press confirm and it'll start moving around. Always hold on to the gimbal because it's moving. All right, once this is done, it says auto check complete, gimbal status is good and we can press confirm. We can go back to the main menu and you can go into this little icon here where, where you can see how the balance is. And you can see if we move the gimbal around, those small bars start to move. And when they're in the green or if you can't see them, then they're good. Now that we got the uh, gimbal properly balanced, it's time to take a look at the motor settings. And the first thing I always do when I've set up the gimbal is that I auto tune the gimbal. So you can do this in a couple of ways. You can press the auto tune there and press start calibrate or you can hold down the front trigger and the M button uh, in four, four or five seconds and it will start auto tuning. There we go. And it calibrates and auto tunes the gimbal's balance to the motors. There we go. Gimbal calibration complete. And now we can go into the settings and adjust them if needed. And I only adjust the settings if I have vibrations coming from any of the motors. But let's just go into the settings right here. We go into the motor parameters in the app because we can't adjust them on the gimbal. So the first thing we'll take a look at is called basic and it's stiffness. And there you can see mine here says 56, 50 and 68. And when I hold on to any of the motors, I don't have any vibrations. So I wouldn't mess with that. I'll just leave it as it is. But what we can take a look at is under advanced, we'll go into advanced and then strength. Because this strength uh, helps with the smoothness of the gimbal. If the strength is too high, you won't get a smooth transition in the end. I normally won't have this set to more than 15 and I usually set it to 15 on the tilt and 15 on the pan. And the row, I just leave as it is. On this one, it's seven. Uh, so it could be even a seven, 10 or anything like that. But don't go over 15 because then you might get vibrations. So we just leave it as it is. And then we're done with the, with the basic uh, motor settings. Let's talk dead band because this is one of the most important settings that many tend to overlook and don't really know what it is because 
you can't adjust it on the gimbal. You have to use the app. So you don't know what dead band does, you're screwed. So dead band makes the gimbal react or gives you a longer delay when you're using your hands on the gimbal. Right now, the gimbal is set to the default settings, which is medium, and also the follow speed is also medium. And as you can see, the gimbal reacts pretty fast to my movement, even though it's it looks super smooth, but as soon as I move my hand, the gimbal will move, and there isn't much room for error. So that's why we need to change dead band. So let me show you where I do that, because we do that in, in the app. So you go into the user profile right here. First, let's go into dead band and change this to high. And then also to, let's change follow speed to slow. Let me show you how the gimbal reacts now. Now you can see we got a much smoother gimbal than we had before. And I can actually wiggle around with my hand without the gimbal moving. So there's a lot more room for error and you will get a lot, uh, you will get a much smoother transition when you work with the gimbal. So I recommend always keep it at high because you can't go in and change it on the go on the gimbal. So keep it on high and then change the follow speed along as you go or change them uh, as you need them for the certain kind of shoots. Let's take a look at the user profiles and the custom settings and I, how I have this setup, set up on the DJI RS3. So, we are going to use the app because we can't change all the values from the gimbal, which is actually pretty annoying. But let's jump into the app and see how it's set up. Go into user profiles down in the corner and we have it in PF mode. And you can see it's set to slow and high as we set it in the dead band section. And that made the gimbal react super smoothly. But if you want to see my custom settings, they're a bit different. You go into custom, there you can customize the settings to your needs. I have it in PF mode, I set all the parameters to 30. I find that as a really good sweet spot for my work and I have the dead band set to six. And then you might say, why don't you have it at 10 when you have it on high? Because high on the, um, <clears throat> on the profiles are not the same as 10. So for me, six is a sweet spot when I shoot real estate, I want the gimbal to react very, very smoothly or other things that where I have a smooth gimbal with smooth transitions. But if you're shooting other things, that might be different for you. Let's take a look at the next one, which is PTF. And we'll jump into this one right here. The PTF, again, you can go with slow and high, and that will be perfect for most occasions. But my custom settings are a bit different. Custom right here, you can see 20, 30, 20. And the reason why I have it on 20, 30, 20 is because 20 on the tilt gives me a bit faster on the transition right here, which I want when I'm using the tilt mode. And on dead band, I've also a different kind of custom settings. I have changed the value on the tilt to four because that gives me a faster delay or a smaller delay when I'm tilting down. And then lastly, I have um, FPV set to custom because I don't use FPV, so my custom settings on the FPV is, is just set to one, I think. It doesn't really matter what you set it to because the gimbal is locked and I don't have to use the trigger to kind of hold it in place. So if you don't use FPV, put it into lock mode so you have a custom lock uh, on your gimbal. For the joystick, I also have the joystick to react very smoothly and slowly. So that's under control. And then you go into motion and I've set those to high, slow, high on all of the values, pan, tilt, and roll. And this way I get a very, very smooth joystick so I can do minor adjustments. The end point, leave that as it is from the default settings. And then I have the push mode set to pan and tilt so I can move the tilt mode without it going back to the default position. The last thing we want to change before you leave is the wheel here. I always have this to tilt and the only way we can change that is on the gimbal. So when you're in the main menu right here, you can see you can pull up and then you can see the dial function is right there and you can change that to whatever you want. I have it set to the tilt mode and then the dial speed is set for 25. And the last thing is the dial smoothness, which I have set to 29. Then you say, why don't you just have it on 30? Because if you go up to 30, 
it does nearly doesn't move. 29 is for me the sweet spot. It has a nice smooth transition right there. So that's how I set my custom settings up. If you want the settings, you can go down and grab the PDF where I have all the settings. I have also a, an extended version where you will get a quick guide of how to set the gimbal up so it reacts super smoothly. There's a guide of how to balance the gimbal correctly. You can see all of the settings for the DJI-R3, the DJI-R3 Pro. And, and lastly, I have a checklist of what I do before I go to a shoot. And then I've listed all of the accessories that I use for this gimbal. So that if there's anything you find <clears throat> interesting, you can just find it in there. But if you're still struggling with getting super smooth shots, I recommend you go watch this video right here.